All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is a special post-wave report Sunday edition, taking a look at the week ahead and what we can anticipate and expect from these markets. All right. So quickly, the very first chart that we're going to look at is the U.S. dollar. All right. You will notice here that the U.S. dollar actually finished in a bullish way. So I'm expecting continuation for the U.S. dollar being that it broke the 98 hand, just getting shy of par. We hit 98.91 for the week. So you can see this market is locked in to the upside. So I expect uh, there to be an opportunity in ticker UUP. That is the U.S. dollar ETF, uh, which is a good um, a good play here for being bullish the dollar. Um, UDN would be the inverse ETF for the U.S. dollar, but we're interested in the UUP uh, for the week ahead. The NASDAQ 100, all right, here's the E-mini NASDAQ 100. Uh, it finished the week still uh, in a bear market, as you can see here, still in the red zone. Uh, it is, it is, uh, you know, translated from a bull market to a bear market. Um, you'll notice too that you know we the the top for now is in. You know, we have a short term top in place. Um, as as the sell off continues in this market, it's looking like we have a lot more downside to go. We have this bearish pointer here from the week prior. Um, the last bearish pointer was on uh, the week of January the 28th, which was taken out already with this bar here from the week of February the 25th. And we ended the week on a uh, on a soft note. You do have a, a, a bullish pointer here. Um, we'll see if it, if it will be significant enough because the overhead trend line resistance is right here. And the market failed to take that out last week. So I think the selling pressure is starting to pick up and we have more downside potential. I think the bottom of the Kumo cloud now is in play and that will take the market south of 12,000. Just something to think about in the week ahead. Looking at the energy markets, here's your WTI crude oil, light sweet crude, finished the, the week. On a bullish note, uh, the, the market settled at $115.67 per barrel. Ouch. And we hit a new weekly high. This market is gaining in strength and the rallies keep continuing. And you can see here from the primary rally alert on the weekly, this market just keeps right on going. Next up, we have the Russell My Hustle. All right. So the Russell. Um, we got a, the way the market, uh, ended last week, we got, uh, you know, on Friday, we got a, a, uh, a trigger alert stating that there was some increased, uh, bullish playing here, positioning. Um, so there is a continuation pattern that we're seeing. So we see a sideways to slightly higher market as buying, some secret buying has uh, has been noticed in the week prior, even though it was, uh, you know, pretty much a consolidated market, but it's still in the, you know, it's still below the trend line resistance and you're in the Kumo cloud, which is extremely wide, 17.5 on the downside, 2200 to the top side. That's extremely wide, hundreds of points. And I think the market's going to continue to do that. But we do have a, uh, a bullish bias in the market, even though the market is still under a state of correction. You enter the green zone because of the amount of bullishness, the amount of long positions being put on in this market. So the system is picking up on that. And we have the possibility of upside breakout in the week ahead possibility. Still has a lot of selling pressure, but still we see as the market is right here at resistance, we see that uh, that interest. So we'll see, can the bulls pull it out? Or 
is the bear or the bear is going to come and uh, and take over? That's the question right now. That's what we're looking for. So we'll see what happens. The Nasdaq is very interesting. Not really a clear read sideways to slightly higher prices. All right, taking a look now at silver. Silver managed uh, to give a bullish sentiment to end the week out. Ended at the highs of the session, $25.78 per ounce. We got the um, the bullish reading here as buy orders came in here. Market is having to pay attention to the bottom of the Kumo cloud, which is acting as a very uh, you know hard resistance need a lot of energy to pick up and break through it and get above the Kumo cloud. And I think based on the readings we got here on the weekly, I think that that uh, that bullish sentiment is enough to carry the day. So for right now, the bulls have control of the market. We got short term lows in place. And I think the market wants to do something about that. We, this is a, uh, a bearish pointer, uh, not not a very significant one, but a bearish pointer nonetheless. So you still have to watch out for the potential for the market to pull back if it fails to, you know, penetrate the bottom of the Kumo cloud. So just a lot to reconcile and deal with in the week ahead, just to think about. Bond market, the ticker is TLT, finished the, finished the week on a bullish note, giving us a primary buy signal on the weekly chart. Primary buy signal here. Uh, not too far away from the overhead trend line resistance and bottom of the Kumo cloud. We'll go ahead and put that at $145. So we're looking at the potential for a $5 run to the top side to start the week off. We will be mindful of that as we move forward. Next up, we have corn futures. All right. So corn also finished the, 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 the week out in a more of a, a bullish tone. Uh, we have a, a slight bullish pointer here, so we know that more top side is to come. And I don't really see any significant gaps along the way of this bull run. We got the primary buy signal back on September this, the week of September the 17th of last year and another um, alert on the week of October the 8th of last year. And then in the final one we got, was on the week of October the 29th of last year, and it's just been upside production ever since. So right now, uh, corn starting to pull away with the new weekly high to end the week. So bullish sentiment there. Taking a look now at soybeans. Soybeans, very interesting. So you have a narrow range inside week. You got a bullish pointer the week prior. The market failed to do anything about it this past week. So I'm thinking that uh, we'll probably get that rally this week. I think the market wants to run away with it. The week prior to this past Friday, we had a, a new weekly high. So I think everything is in favor for this market to uh, continue its upside surge as well. Next up, we got the wheat futures. Okay, wheat futures was absolutely phenomenal. Look at this weekly bar. The market ran from 885 per bushel all the way up to $13.48 per bushel. That is a super parabolic bar. You have to you have to be ready for any kind of a pullback. The pullback could be absolutely vicious. So you need to think about that uh, when you're looking to get involved. It really, the market really didn't give you too much opportunity to get involved because it was locked limit up every day for the whole week. So very powerful thing going on here in this. Uh, a good alternative, if you don't have the stomach to trade uh, the futures, remember there are micro futures on this soybeans. Uh, the ticker is XC. If you're trading on the Think or Swim platform, it's forward slash XC. That's the micro contracts. You may be able to stomach that one a little bit better. Or, or if you can't trade futures or don't have access to futures, you can always trade uh, the ETF, the ETF ticker is soy B as in boy. So S as in Sam, O as in Oscar, Y as in yo-yo, B as in Bravo. Soy B is the ETF uh, for soybeans if you want to get involved that way. And for wheat, the ticker is W-E-A-T as in Tom. All right, next up we got 
gold. All right, so you can see here the gold futures uh, ended in a, in a rather bullish note. It failed to take out the uh, the bullish pointer from the week prior, but still, you know, a good a good close for the week nonetheless. Um, you have good lift off here. You got that locked in bullish sentiment, and there's room for it to run. I think the next upside target for gold would be that two thousand dollar psychological resistance. The market has all the potential to do it, and it doesn't have any bills to pay along the way. Looking at the weekly chart, there is no real significant gaps to speak of, so they've all pretty much been closed out along the way. So I think this market is set for now to continue its upward trajectory. Taking a look here at our Illuminati index hack, H-A-C-K, you'll notice that we uh, ended the week uh, also on a bullish note. The market has now put in a short-term bottom. This is a bearish pointer, though, we cannot ignore, but it gave us a secondary rally alert, and this week did not let us down. It actually gave us upside production before pulling back, though, making a bullish pointer on the week. And I do believe that the market wants to trade and test the higher ends of this trading range inside of the wide Kumo cloud. $61 being the top side resistance, $53 being the support side. So I think this market is ready to go. You got this increase in uh, bullish sentiment. So I think the market's ready to, to, to test that and see what, see what happens. All right, next up we have our... I call this my new VIX, ticker HDGE. That's the, the bear fund. And as you can see here, it's kind of in a long, drawn-out bottoming process. A lot of sideways action, okay? And right now, though, the the trend is bearish to, you know, to, to, you know, to you know, sideways to slightly bearish. And you did get a sell signal for the closing week. So I don't think the market is ready to um, call a top in these equities at this time. Um, I think we have a short-term top in equities, but not a hard top, because if we did, then HDGE uh, would be rallying and would be very strong. Instead, we don't see that at all, all right? So it's locked into the downside. All right, looking at natural gas, all right, and you can see here the nat gas futures ended on a bullish note near the highs of the session. We still got this bullish pointer made the week of January the 28th of this year to reconcile at some point. Uh, I think the market is building a case to do so. This is a nice little bottoming out support zone, and I think the market has everything it needs, all the potential to, to break out. And I think that's what we're seeing here, the potential for the market to break out. Um, you know, technically speaking, you're real, you're right at the top of the Kumo cloud and the market's looking to get enough momentum to, to get out of that. Right now, I can't say that I think it definitely will do it because the locked in bullishness has come off. So we need to relock back in in order to lock this back in for the market to continue because right now the bullishness has come off. So interesting uh, turn of events in that gas. Not as strong as you know crude oil but you still got this bullish pointer so at some point the market does need to come up and test and or take out that 750 handle we'll see what happens again these are news driven markets so any update on the war you know what happens last but not least is bitcoin so bitcoin finally looks looks to finish out the week here on a bearish note all right um, you're right here at, uh, let's see, you have a bullish pointer here on the weekly chart. So I think sideways to, uh, to slightly lower will probably be in pay and play here. This is kind of a Mitch match. Um, you know, the market is flipping bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish. The bears still have control for now, but it looks like we may have put in a short-term bottom. This is a bearish pointer, though, that we can't ignore. And then you have a bullish pointer. So this, these two reconcile each other, meaning that this will be the top 
of the range, which is 45,455. Support for this trading range will be at 34,295. Okay. So you got a, we got a wide trading range, but I think the market's going to move sideways to, uh, with a slightly bearish bias. You did have some buying interest that came in during this this past week, but you see how the market basically collapsed into the into itself. So we'll see what happens here. Um, as you know, anything goes in these markets; anything can happen. You just have to be ready and uh, locked and loaded when it comes to Bitcoin. It is the wild, wild west of markets as far as volatility goes. All right, so that's it. Uh, you do have your dashboard has been updated. Uh, the Pulseway reports are are out and ready for your perusal at your leisure. You got your marching orders. You know what to do. So remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. And I'm out. Happy trading week. Peace.